Well, good morning, everybody. This is a really great turnout. I am just so pleased to see so many supporters, community supporters in this room. And I really want to give, uh, as I begin my remarks, just a really heartfelt thank you uh, to uh, the people behind me. Um, the police chiefs, uh, our sheriff, uh, Bob Fletcher, our public health director, Ann Berry, and we have some elected officials here. Ramsey County uh, Commissioner Trista Montes Castillo is here. Uh, uh, Mayor uh, uh, Joe Emerson from White Bear Lake is here as well. Uh, but most importantly, and sprinkled throughout the audience here, are the staff. The staff of all of the various agencies who are here who actually do the heavy lifting every day and serve our victims as best uh, as they can. And we've had this conversation for a really long time in, in Ramsey County for the past two years about trying to figure out how we can have uh, better outcomes for our victims. But a lot of that work has been uh, driven by uh, the staff who are very much victim-centered and have been doing this work. And of course, I wanna um, thank um, all of our victim survivors who are here, uh, Sarah Super, you're gonna hear from, uh, but also in the audience here as well. Um, the work that we're doing uh, is really informed and led by uh, the, the, the voice, your voices, and the things that you have been talking about. And so today is a really important day because um, uh, through this work today publicly, uh, really what we're doing is we're making a promise, a promise to the public, a promise to our victims that we can indeed uh, do better. And so I've been engaged in this work for a number of years, and uh, as I said a year ago um, in April in 2018, uh, there is a lot of things that need to change, and I can't tell you how pleased I am uh, to have uh, the commitment on the part of the people behind me and the people in this audience who wanna make those changes so that we can create a better world uh, for women and girls, but also for boys and men as well. So back in January of 2016, this is when this conversation started in Ramsey County, where we said that we would be a start by believing community. And through those efforts over the past, uh, during that time period, uh, we've done a lot of community outreach and education to kind of talk about the culture that exists and the challenges that exist for the victims of sexual assault uh, when they have to, uh, when they have their uh, situation, their ordeal, their crime that's been committed against them and then thinking about reporting uh, this to somebody else, to talk to their family member, a friend, and of course law enforcement. And we know historically uh, that this, this is a very, very underreported crime. And as a part of our work in 2016, we said that we needed to get some data and we needed to look at our systems response. And so for two years, uh, we looked at all of the various issues. And then in 2018, uh, in April, uh, we released our sexual assault systems review, and, and that was where we really got some markers about what needed to be improved. And since that time, uh, we haven't been doing nothing. We've been doing a lot, uh, working together collaboratively. This is a multi-agency, multi-discipline type of approach because the reality is, is that if just one part of the system says that we need to do better and the other parts aren't necessarily tracking or they're doing something different, uh, we're really not gonna make the change. And we also talked about a year ago that nothing is gonna change unless our community, our public invests in more resources because we talked about the under-resourcing of our systems response as it relates to advocacy, investigation, and prosecution. And we've had this conversation with our community uh, about changing all of that. And I just I wanna thank um, uh, our leadership uh, with respect to our county commissioners, especially com uh, Chair Jim McDonough, uh, who could not be here today. He's out of town on uh, county business. And of course, our various city councils, uh, especially in St. Paul and our mayor, who have actually made uh, these investments. Right now, we have, um, for the next two years, uh, $750,000 of public investment that has gone into uh, trying to improve some of those outcomes. But one of the things I want to say, and, as, and we're gonna have other speakers talk about some of the details of our implementation plan. And, but one of the things that I wanna make sure that everybody understands is one of the things that's actually uh, happening right now, and I think a lot of it has to do with this campaign around Start By Believing and the current, and the current environment that we live uh, in, is that more people in this community are reporting their crimes, their abuse that's happened to them. 
fact, we've had dramatic increases. Chief Axtell is going to talk, and, and Chief Mathuk as well, about some of those increases, as well as our public health uh, department. But just if we look at 2015 as a baseline, because we started our work back in April of 2016, and uh, well uh, before the, the modern Me Too movement, um, we've had a 75% in percent increase in the cases that have been presented to our office for prosecution review. Uh, we went from 181 cases to 318 uh, over per year, and that goes from 2015 to 2018. That's also resulted in a 19% increase in cases charged and a 17% increase in the overall convictions per year. While the overall charging rate, if you compare that to police uh, incident data, uh, we still haven't changed the, the, the percentages yet but I'm absolutely confident uh, that we're going to. There's a lot of other really good trends. We've had, remember a, a year ago, I talked about the fact that we have had, uh, the, during the review that uh, Karin Long did, um, during that uh, three-year period, uh, we had all of our jury trials, we actually won those jury trials, and that's a good thing. But at the same time, it means something else, that perhaps we're not taking uh, the, the chances that we need to take on some of the cases where we believe strongly that there is a wrongdoing and somebody is guilty. And so we've had dramatic increases in the just amount of jury trials. In 2015, we only had three of these. In 2018, uh, we had 12. And we're not winning all of those uh, cases as well. So I think that's, uh, those are really important things in terms of some data that we're looking at. And so as more victims come forward to law enforcement and more cases are presented, it is so critical for us in this community to get this right. And we're, the people behind the, here at me today, uh, we're working very hard to do that and we're starting to get some of those resources that are now being deployed. Uh, and so I'm very hopeful, very hopeful about our future and, and hopeful because of the work that's being done by um, our staff in the various agencies. So with that, I want to turn it over uh, to Chief Todd Axtell, uh, who has been um, uh, with us since the very beginning of this conversation. So Chief. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. This really is, uh, uh, in, in many ways, an emotional day for all of our partners on the stage and our community, because this is such a, a horrific, horrific, crime that we talk about, sexual assaults in our community. I'd like to start by thanking County Attorney John Choi for your leadership and tenacity in improving the outcomes for sexual assault survivors. Here's a little background for you. In 2018, we had 2,241 criminal sexual conduct cases that came into the St. Paul Police Department. This compares to 1,805 cases in the year prior to this, 2017. 24% increase. That is significant. Some police chiefs may say that is a sign of failure, that we have that many more sexual assault cases. I'm here to tell you that's a sign of success because our victims feel more empowered today than any time in our history to come forward with their sexual assault stories and then to understand that we are here to support you during that horrific journey that you're about to embark upon. Each case involves a survivor whose life has forever been changed. We also know that every survivor has loved ones and family members who also will be changed forever. Sexual assault tears at the fabric of our community by taking away our collective sense of security. It's a crime that doesn't respect human decency, nor does it care about jurisdictional boundaries. We all have an obligation in this room and throughout our entire community to seek justice for our survivors, and that's why I'm incredibly proud to be part of this incredible effort. It builds on the work that we're already doing, starting by believing, adding two sex crimes investigators, partnering with many other agencies to launch the East Metro Sexual Assault Task Force, and by improving our training. All of our investigators are now trained for trauma-informed victim interviewing. This is a gold standard for sex crimes investigators. And later this year, we will be providing in-service training for the entire department on neurobiology of trauma and basic training of forensic services 
and exams. Effective September of 2018, we now have a commander, Jim Felkowski, thank you for your service, who his only job is to supervise the sex crimes unit. Thanks to this initiative, we'll be using the best practices to hold offenders accountable for their actions, and it will make us more effective. But most importantly, it will help us secure justice for our survivors. To our survivors, I want you to know we believe you. We support you, and we will use every ounce of our energy and every resource of the 800 women and men of the St. Paul Police Department to hold offenders accountable and support you and your family through every step of the way. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over now to Roseville Police Chief Rick Mathway. Rick. Thank you, Chief Axtell. I wanna start by also thanking uh, County Attorney John Choi for arranging this and inviting us to participate and speak with you today. Sexual assault crimes are violent and traumatic events. They take place in all of our communities. Victims' lives are forever changed and they should be believed when victims report such heinous crimes to law enforcement. Law enforcement agencies from across Ramsey County have committed to investigate sexual assault cases using a victim-centered and trauma-informed approach. The Roseville Police Department is one of the agencies committed to getting better every day with every victim. Large law, law enforcement agencies can dedicate units of detectives to specialize in sexual assault investigations. Suburban agencies lack this ability. Suburban and rural law enforcement agencies must assign these horrible sexual assault cases to a detective or two who also conducts investigations on many other crimes. The Roseville Police Department assigns most of its sexual investigations to one well-trained, trauma-informed detective. This detective has a caseload of 244 to 285 cases per year in the last three years. This detective's caseload is mainly comprised of criminal sexual assault, child abuse, domestic assault, in order for protection violations. The average caseload for a Roseville detective has risen from 188 cases in 2016 to 211 cases in 2018. The International Association of Chiefs of Police, the IAC, IACP, me measures a manageable caseload for a detective is 120 to 180 cases. So 120 to 180 cases per year is what the IACP recommends as a manageable caseload. All Roseville felony level cases presented to the Ramsey County Attorney's Office have, been risen, have risen by over 10% the last three years. From 2016 to 2018, 911 calls for criminal sexual conduct have risen dramatically by 40%, 40% in Roseville. There have been no increases in police officer staffing levels in Roseville for over 10 years. Advanced trauma-informed training is expensive, but the Roseville Police Department is committed to existing funds and time away from the office to better train a second detective to investigate sexual assault cases. My department has already incorporated the new Minnesota Post-mandated sexual assault investigations policy into our practice. All law enforcement agencies in Ramsey County have committed to improving their responses to victims of sexual assault and conduct investigations using a victim-centered and trauma-informed approach. As Ramsey County John Choi has stated, we know nothing will substantially change unless we, as a community, invest in better outcomes. Thank you. I want to introduce Ramsey County Sheriff Bob Fletcher. First of all, thank you to all the advocates and the staff members that have worked, uh, do, have done the heavy lifting for so many years. Um, really, you should be up here and we should be honoring you, but we honor you um, with our words today. Yesterday, uh, Mayor Fry in Minneapolis uh, made a statement that was very powerful. He said, reporting sexual assault is an act of courage. And unfortunately, the victim doesn't feel courageous at the time of the reporting. As I've looked in their eyes over the years, they feel intense sadness, trauma, and fear. Fear that um, the officer that they're going to talk to um, might not truly understand what they went through. Fear that their husband, significant other, family member is not gonna totally understand fear that there are health concerns, um, 
fear that uh, they will have to tell their story five, six, seven times again and fear of going to court, fear of whether they should even report the matter in the first place. And that's not the way we should be operating. This is uh, Richard Rowan's building. I don't know if any of you know him, but he was the police chief that swore me in 40 years ago. And we need to keep changing, to keep getting better for the victims like Sarah that's going to talk so that we can address those fears and make sure that we're supporting them and they feel comforted along the way. The pipeline of justice is so contorted at times that you can get lost. And thanks to John Choi for his leadership, we're streamlining the pipeline. We're making sure that advocates that are fully trained, that some of them that are here, can get connected with the victims at the earliest possible moment. You know, the way it used to work is the, the street officer would investigate, they tell them, well, you'll be uh, contacted. And quite frankly, years ago, we trained them to be very just professional but not compassionate. We didn't train compassion. We didn't train for support. What we trained is get all the information, like Chief Arredondo said yesterday. That needs to change because that, that fear isn't mitigated until they know that there's someone there that's supporting them. And then a couple days later, an investigator would call them, and we had, a, we had a belief that somehow the investigator had to talk to the victim before the advocate years ago. Well, we've learned that we need to hook that professional advocate up with that victim at the earliest possible moment. And that's one of the things that this protocol and plan put together by others does. It also adds investigators. Uh, for those of you in the news media back there in the back row, in the pink is the Ramsey County Sheriff uh, investigator Jessica O'Hearn. She's a specialist in this area and she has been leading the way in terms of helping us draft a grant and thanks to John and Jessica we are adding an additional sex crimes investigator as well. So you know our, our thanks to them again. But in a minute I'm going to introduce Sarah. Um, well actually I'm, we're going to go to Ann Berry first but when Sarah comes up here um, <laughs> I, I just I want us all to appreciate the courage that these victims have in working through the process and find ways that we can be supportive and compassionate throughout those steps so that that fear becomes courage as they testify in court, which of course is the ultimate fear for most of these victims. Thank you. So thank you, Sheriff Fletcher, and uh, thank you. I'm going to add my thanks to County Attorney John Choi for providing the leadership. It has been instrumental in moving this work forward, so we are grateful for your leadership. I also want to also acknowledge the Ramsey County Board Chair, Jim McDonough, who's not able to be here, and also Commissioner Maddox Castillo, who is here with us today, representing the board, who has been generous in providing us support in public health, um, and just last year gave us authority to use our money to add two new advocates to our staff who were desperately needed to do this advocacy work. Um, <clears throat> this new agreement, or a partnership as I like to describe it, is between law enforcement, prosecutors, and public health, and it's an essential step in moving upstream to provide the support survivors need for healing and for a focus on prevention. These commitments and recommitments we are making today acknowledge that we have to do better, we have to be consistent, we have to be co coordinated if, if we're gonna change a culture and reduce for future instances of sexual violence. St. Paul Ramsey County Public Health through our sexual violence services and is the primary advocacy service in Ramsey County. Uh, Pahoy is here with me, she'll be saying a few words. Uh, we also have some of our advocacy staff here uh, up on the stage. Our staff and volunteers work with survivors and families to provide support, show them the options that are available to them, and provide help with a range of needs. We have a 24-hour crisis line. We provide medical advocacy during exam or medical care. We offer counseling and support. And we provide navigation with some very complicated legal and financial issues. The number of clients served by SOS in recent years has increased significantly. Again, Pahua will help us understand what, what we've been seeing in the last year and two. 
but it is really clear to us that supporting and helping survivors as they navigate the justice system is a big and growing part of our work. We know from our experience with medical exams that having an advocate helps build a support system for survivors and helps them heal and understand all of the options that are available to them. So I'd like to now turn it over to Pahua Vang. She's an advocate in our sexual assault services program. She's here to talk to you more about working with our clients and how what we do makes a difference. Thank you, Pahua. Thank you. So a lot of people ask, you know, what is an advocate? A lot of people don't know what an advocate is. And so one of the things that I always tell people uh, when I meet with them is that my role as an advocate is really to support you in whatever way that you would like me to support you. I'm not here to tell you what to say or do, but I'm here to give you information and options so that you can make the best decision for yourself. And I'm here to support and respect your decision there too. Um, so we kind of mentioned a little bit before, in 2016 we started the Start By Believing initiative, which really aimed at um, changing the culture around sexual violence and combating victim blaming. And we've continued to weave this message into our Ramsey County Sexual Assault Protocol team, which is a multidisciplinary team that's been going on for 20 years, including um, advocacy, law enforcement, prosecution, corrections, our medical providers, and our higher education as well. And we have seen a difference that this has made. Um, one of the biggest fears of people having, the survivors have, when they come forward is that they're afraid they won't be believed. And so as an advocate, I'm there to help inform them, you know, I'm here to support you through this process and let them know that we as a county have made a commitment to start by believing. And so we are going to hold ourselves accountable to that and support you through this the best way that we can. Um, in addition to that, in 2016, we've seen with the rise of the Me Too movement and the national conversation sexual assaults um, that survivors finally heard that we are not alone. Uh, we are finally creating an environment safe enough for survivors to come forward and speak if and when they are ready. Um, so since then, our numbers have increased dramatically. Um, in 2018, we saw over 1,200 uh, clients, uh, duplicated clients, and um, that is an increase of over 58% in just the last two years. That increase is even bigger if we compared it from 2015, but we didn't have those numbers ready av readily available. Um, in addition, um, we serve clients from all ages, all genders, all race, um, socioeconomic status and background and such. And over 80% of all of our interactions involves advocacy or questions related to the criminal justice process. So whether that is informing them of their rights, um, navigating the system, uh, joining them in, in person at the sexual assault exams, um, at the filing police report, at the investigative interviews, or in court. Um, not everyone chooses to report, but if they do, having an advocate can make a huge difference. Uh, so we've mentioned before too, over the last two years, the county attorney's office did a system, sexual assault systems review. And one of the biggest things we heard over and over from survivors was that they felt alone in the process. They didn't know what was going on. There are long periods of silence since sexual assault investigations can take several months. And so that's where uh, my role as an advocate can come in uh, and be really helpful to help the person um, help reduce their sense of isolation and also keep them engaged throughout the process. Um, and so I've heard people have told us, you know, if it wasn't for you, I don't know what I would have done. I just didn't have the energy to reach out to call the investigator, and I really appreciated you continuing to follow up with me. Um, so it has been so humbling to do this work, but I know that we don't do this alone. It takes a commitment of our county attorney's office, all of our law enforcement agencies in Ramsey County, our multidisciplinary sexual assault protocol team, and you all as a community at large to make this space a safe space for all survivors. So thank you all for being here and I'm going to introduce next Sarah Super, who is a survivor who will speak about her experiences. On a weeknight in February of 2015, my ex-boyfriend Alec Neal broke into my apartment, hid in a closet for several hours, woke me at knife point then raped me and cut me before I could escape whatever he had planned to do next. I fled to my neighbor's apartment where they let me in and called the St. Paul police. The police came quickly and minutes after I was raped, I was reporting my ex-boyfriend for criminal sexual conduct in the first degree. After making the report, I was taken in a squad car to the hospital downtown St. Paul where a saint, uh, sexual assault nurse examiner helped me complete a rape kit. Alec had fled 
but was arrested that night and months later sentenced to 12 years in prison for his crime. The late poet Maya Angelou said that at the end of the day, people won't remember what you said or did. People will, people will remember the way you made them feel. Her words offer a window into the science of how our brains and our bodies remember, particularly in the aftermath of something traumatic. Many victims do not remember everything their perpetrator said or did during the assault, but our bodies remember the way they made us feel. On that night, Alec did things and said things that made me feel powerless and scared. He made me afraid to trust anyone and he made me feel like my voice didn't matter, like I didn't matter. In the days and weeks following my rape, I interacted with so many different people, police officers, a sexual assault nurse examiner, a prosecutor, a victim witness, a victim advocate, a therapist, my parents, my friends, my landlord, my neighbors, my supervisor, my colleagues, and more. I can't recall specifically what each of them said and did when I told them what had happened to me, but I can tell you how they made me feel. I can classify their response in either of two categories. How they responded was either hurtful or healing. There was no such thing as a neutral response to being raped. Seeing my perpetrator held accountable for his crime has done more for my healing than I can possibly describe. From the moment I fled my apartment, people showed me that I mattered. They did this by opening a door to a woman begging for help, by responding to a 911 call immediately, by listening with compassion to the information I could muster up as I shook with fear. The severity of his 12 year sentence validated the importance of my safety and thus the safety of women everywhere. Having my perpetrator held accountable has allowed me to use my voice for change. I have the freedom to tell my story and name my perpetrator without fear of being sued for defamation. I can tell my story everywhere and be believed by everyone. And by seeing the impact of my voice, I've regained a sense that my voice matters, that I deserve to be treated with respect by all people at all times, and that I can affect change. Every survivor who seeks justice from this system deserves the compassionate and affirming response that I received. My healing did not end the day of Alex sentencing, nor has it ended years later. But I can say that the people who took this case seriously have contributed to a great source of healing. And I owe a special thanks to some truly amazing women who I met along this journey. My advocate, Kathy Siegel, my prosecutor, Yasmin Mullins, and Judge Judith, Judith Tilson. The way in which law enforcement, prosecutors, judges, and victim advocates do their jobs has been and will always be either hurtful or healing through the eyes of a victim. I strongly support every initiative you take to make amends for the hurt you've caused victims and to make this experience one that brings healing and validation as it did for me. Thank you. So at this time, and we're going to take a uh, question and answer, but what we wanted to do now, because what this moment represents is that be behind me is every chief uh, in Ramsey County. Every law enforcement agency is represented, our public health department, and of course the county attorney's office. Uh, today we're making this promise, a commitment to the public um, around uh, the implementation plan, and we, can, uh, we didn't go into much of the detail. Uh, but there's a lot of transformational things that are in there, and we can talk about some of those during the Q&A. But I think what we wanted to do now before the question and answer was actually uh, have a ceremonial uh, signing of uh, this uh, agreement, this partnership. Uh, and I think that's a really important concept here in Ramsey County that we recognize that we cannot do this alone. 
we do this through multi-agency, multidisciplinary work, working in partnership uh, for uh, the betterment of our victims. And so I think, but Dennis, you've got the pens, and so I think Ann Barry you should grab one because I know your agency is represented. And as people are signing it, um, I also want to point out, um, as we talked about, this is a really critical time uh, because of the increase in victims coming forward uh, to our sexual offense services program, to our law enforcement. And right now, uh, Chief Mathwig has a, a, a request for two additional detectives in Roseville. And so other people in Roseville, we certainly want to have the, encourage them to be contacting their mayor and city council. Right, Chief? <laughs> Okay, well there it is, there's our partnership. I think we should give ourselves a round of applause, yeah. right? <laughs> All right. So I think at this time, I mean, just let us know who, what questions you have and, and, and tell us who you want to have answer it. Yeah, and I think that's one of the one of the things I'm most excited about this in terms of where I think it's, uh, I, I just having talked with uh, a number of people from the advocacy community, um, I think this is a first of its kind approach and a lot of this has to do with uh, the innovation of uh, Chief Axtell. You know, Chief um, has been, as a part of his leadership, uh, he's really been a leader around trying to figure out ways to bring in uh, partnering with police officers who respond to crimes and bringing in other aspects of our community and expertise. And so the St. Paul Police Department has had a long history of uh, including uh, members of our community uh, who have a certain professional expertise to um, be involved with uh, the work of the police. So as an example, um, this department in St. Paul was very innovative in having domestic abuse advocates there along with police uh, as they would respond to domestic violence situations. Um, and through that work, and I think through that thinking and the partnership with uh, what the advocates really, really wanted was to you know, be at that place where uh, the investigation and that interview would be happening. And so a part of this is, is that uh, for interviews that are occur of uh, a, a victim of a sexual assault, uh, our vision is to have an advocate there present uh, for every interview and that we have better connections with respect to um, uh, that first investigative interview because that's really, really critical. And credit to all of the suburban uh, police chiefs who agreed to do that. That's something that's very, very different uh, to say that instead of just doing this by yourself, to recognize it's very important to have advocacy there so that they can talk to uh, the victim before the interview and also be present uh, during the interview. And I really think that's the uh, first of its kind approach in the state of Minnesota.
Yeah, so throughout, yes, so throughout the county, and this is a really important part of our message, because uh, a year ago in April of 2018, we talked about um, the under-resourcing of our system response uh, to the victims of sexual violence. We talked about it in the context of advocacy, in the context of prosecution, and of course, in investigation. So since that time, we've added about $750,000 of public dollars into more positions. So as Ann Berry talked about, um, the county board authorized uh, uh, two additional um, advocates uh, in our SOS program, and they uh, started, I think, in the late fall, September, and then uh, through uh, the work of the county, actually, and this is something that had never been done before, we transferred county dollars over to the city and through that, uh, through uh, Chief Axtell's advocacy and the mayor and the city council accepting those funds, uh, they were able to add two full-time investigators um, to that complement. Um, and that, uh, I think those ass assignments occurred in the summer. Uh, the funding uh, was transferred over in the fall of uh, 2018. Um, we've also recently received a grant from the Office of Justice Programs who are here uh, through their administration of the VAWA uh, funds that come to the state of Minnesota. We were um, selected to be in Ramsey County, um, one of the recipients, and that was a, a very uh, important grant because I think it was about $900,000 that was available for the state of Minnesota. But I think Ramsey County was very, very poised to receive some additional resources, and so $300,000 came to Ramsey County to fund uh, a, an additional prosecutor and an investigator in the sheriff's office. And what that will do is really kind of take our work to the next level. I think we've done a lot of work over the past two years, but I think now we're poised with that investment in the sheriff's department um, and our prosecutor now being available to all of the police agencies and the most important part of this is to have it early in the process, uh, very, very early in the process, so that investigator and prosecutor can start talking about the case right after an incident occurs. And that's just the beginning. And as we had said before, um, this is a really critical time. We cannot drop the ball now because we've created an environment and we have an environment in this country and in this community where more victims are feeling empowered to come forward. And so in order to meet those demands, um, that is only the beginning. And in fact, as I mentioned, uh, Chief Mathwig has a formal request for two additional uh, detectives in his agency, and that will make a huge difference in Roseville in our community. And I have every confidence uh, that the people in Roseville are smart and that they're gonna make this investment because I know that's what the public would want. I've been talking too much, well, and I can help you. She covers the suburbs. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Sarah, yeah, absolutely. They're uh, really outside of the statutory limits. There's no limit on reporting. It's not unusual for victims to go several days, weeks, or months, and th that fear drives their decision not to report. And at some point, the not reporting bother the bothers them as much as the reporting so yes, we will take reports and we will treat them with the same compassion that we would if it was the same evening. Obviously there are evidentiary issues there. The longer that the reporting uh, goes, the more difficult it is to recover some evidence, but, and that's why, the, that's why eliminating the fear and having people feel comfortable to re s report is so critical for us because that that initial evidence is so important for us to the, for the final prosecution. So 
where we can use it. <laughs> Um, and in addition to that, as advocates, we can be there any step of the way. So before you make a report, if you don't want to make a report, after you make a report, we can be there too. Um, in addition, with the partnership that we're also having with St. Paul Police uh, in s July of 2018, uh, we signed onto an MOU that any time a survivor comes forward to report a police uh, report a sexual assault, um, they will also be offered um, an. Uh, a letter, a release of information that which would only just share their contact name and their phone number for SOS to follow up with them. If they don't want that, they don't have to have that, but that's a way that we can get connected to them um, whenever they choose to report. So that's a partnership that we've had with St. Paul Police and we are continuing that partnership with all of our Ramsey County uh, law enforcement agencies as well. I should also add one more thing too. I think for, for there was a mention about just kind of thinking about like the statute of limitations. I really, my message to the community and to the public is to not think about really those issues. I think the most important thing is if you feel that you're ready to report something, um, to come forward. And in fact, um, even if the case can't be prosecuted because of some statute of limitations problem, um, a lot of our perpetrators are repeat offenders and they victimize numerous people. And so there's a way possibly that your information and your story and your voice can have an important part of ensuring that we have justice in our community to hold a perpetrator accountable. There's also, a, a, um, uh, and then also too for the statute of limitations, I mean uh, oftentimes the statute's gonna start when you make that report. So it will start that process after that uh, time period. And there's also a, a, um, a bill at the legislature right now uh, to actually eliminate the statute of limitations for all sex, criminal sexual conduct cases which I think would be a, a step in the right direction. So there's a, a lot of um, um, proposals at the state legislature and uh, Lindsey Bryce from uh, the Minnesota Coalition of Sexual Assault is here to talk about some of those proposals. Uh, but the, there's a, a number of them that I think could make dramatic improvements. And so I'm hopeful that those things will pass this year. If not, I think another thing, the approach that many of the advocacy community, we should listen to our, uh, the advocacy community, but they're talking about wanting uh, to actually rewrite the entire uh, criminal sexual conduct uh, statute. It's a statute that's been developed over decades. And so when people add things here and there, uh, it just does not read very well. And then sometimes applying that law can be very, very difficult. So one of the efforts that they wanna do over the interim is actually to convene stakeholders and to, and to have a conversation about how better to improve these laws. And I think that would be also a really great process. One of the uh, issues that um, we've been wrestling with is in the ca context of just the inebriation cases where you've got a victim um, who may not remember all of the details about what happened. Those, those cases are very, very difficult because of the current state of the law. I would like to see uh, that change uh, to make that more clear and that's part of that conversation as well. That only occurred in Minneapolis. <laughs> Go ahead. And that's, that's the reason why yeah, that was a Minneapolis. <laughs> that was identified as a Minneapolis problem. So, I'll say this: um, we we are absolutely committed, and the city of St. Paul has really put their mouth where their uh, put their money where their mouth is in this regard. Uh, we have invested in extra investigators. We have added more officers to the street due to reorganization of the department, and we're absolutely committed to making sure that we have the quickest possible response to support the survivors of sexual assault. We have officers obviously on duty 24-7, 365. We prioritize the calls to the best of our ability, and I have to tell you, as St. Paul's Police Chief, there is no higher priority. 
in this city than sexual assault. Thank you.